What the hell is going on, guys? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about my Q1 results uh, that I had for 2018. Uh, so I made around $1,300, $1,400 in dividend income uh, from the majority of stocks that I own. Um, I guess just to dive right into it, this is how I currently have my portfolio split in terms of value. Uh, so I have my individual brokerage account, uh, a small account that I have for money that I've made off of YouTube, uh, my Roth IRA, my computer shares account, um, some shares that I get through work, uh, and personal savings, and then obviously my 401k. As you guys probably know, I don't generally make any videos about my 401k, but just to guess to show you guys, you know, my value of my portfolios that I generally do talk to you guys about is generally this 60 or so percent uh, here, and I generally just leave this kind of to be. Uh, as it is. But uh, here is really the breakdown. So the sector weight uh, percentage of the portfolio versus the income. So obviously a lot of the stocks that I do own are energy stocks and of which have high yield uh, dividends. So about 40% of my income, which is a very large amount, um, comes from energy, uh, energy stocks. Uh, a decent amount comes from uh, consumer staples and real estate in terms of percentage weight, so almost 20% of my income comes from real estate, uh, and then about 9.3 comes from consumer staples, and then um, a decent amount comes from the telecom sector. Um, my goal, I guess, over the next few months or quarters or so is to really try to even out this sector income percentage of my portfolio. So obviously I have very little amount of dis consumer discretionary, uh, a very a few amount of utilities, uh, materials, healthcare. Um, <clears throat> so really, just to try to even out these sectors and really raise the amount uh, of volume that I have in these sectors, so that my obviously my real estate and my energy kind of goes down. Um, now, if you kind of look at uh, what I actually have in terms of stocks uh, by percentage. Uh, two of my largest holdings, or three, I guess, rather, are um, energy stocks, BP, uh, Shell, and also Exxon. Uh, and then I have a bunch of smaller stocks here and there, like BHP, which you can kind of call materials, I guess. I think it's classified under materials. First Solar, which is kind of energy, but they classify it actually as an uh, information technology company. But anyway, if you just kind of look at it this way, you see that everything's kind of split up into a decent pie size, uh, but of which there's a few that are kind of in the 1% to 2% range, and you have your larger pieces of pie, like the 5%, 6% pieces. But um, try to generally uh, not limit you know, the majority of my um, owning, or earn, uh, majority of my stock ownership into one specific, um, I guess, stock as a whole. So actually looking at everything uh, on a yearly graphic in terms of where I've come so far, um, you guys are probably used to this. So the past couple of years I've had about 70% dividend growth, uh, 16 and 17 going into 18. Um, so forward year projection for 2018 at the moment is about $5,100, $5,200. Um, that doesn't include any capital that I'll be adding throughout the year. <clears throat> um, so which is pretty good, you know, thinking about it in that term, it's just over $400 a month uh, of dividend income on average uh, and still growing. Uh, as you can see, next year I'll be at about $5,600, $5,700 without even actually adding another dime this year. Of course, that assumes that there's not going to be any dividend cuts, but it also doesn't include any dividend growth that I'll have either this year or next year as well, or additional capital. So... My hope uh, for this year is to easily get to the $6,000 mark, uh, but that's going to be pretty difficult considering we're already almost through April, uh, so it'll require a lot of capital, but still be my goal for the year. And the next year, I don't know, something around seventy-two, maybe $8,000. We'll see. I mean, I got a, I got a whole uh, six or seven months before I start really thinking about that. Um, in terms of where I've gotten to... Um, January was a pretty decent month. I got about, um, in terms of 2018, 250 or so dollars of income. Uh, February is about 212 or so dollars. And then, as everyone's probably aware, my three, six, nine, and 12 months are my largest months. So I uh, got around $660 or so. 
So more than half the income, uh, or close to half the income from my first quarter uh, results coming in, in March. Um, but you can see my March, my June, September, and December are my largest months by far. And you can see next year I added a lot of, I think I added a lot of Philip Morris in the first quarter, uh, just based off of the fact that um, I had some, I had the ability to distribute to some of my Roth IRA, and then I also uh, sold off some of my first solar, about 15 shares of first solar, and purchased more Philip Morris um, more recently when the stock took a 15% hit. So my cost basis for Philip Morris now is around $92, which I think is a phenomenal cost basis. Um, and, of course, if it continues to go down, I'd probably sell off maybe some of my BHP or uh, First Solar to, to add on to that, just based off the fact that uh, my First Solar and BHP are both over at 100% I return at this point. Um, maybe I'll show you guys where I'm at with that in a later time. Um, but, yeah, here you see Q1, um, the first three months uh, adding up to be – Oh, sorry. Oh, I misspoke earlier. Not thirteen hundred dollars, but more like eleven hundred dollars. That's my fault. Um, thirteen hundred dollars or fourteen hundred dollars is going to be more for my uh, 2019 income. But this, well, I guess, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars um, is about where I'm at for Q1 of this year. Um, obviously, I don't get any YouTube income anymore because I'm below a thousand subscribers. Uh, so that's the current goal at the moment is to try to get back to a thousand subscribers so I can get back into YouTube's good graces and make some uh, more cash that way. But in terms of um, money that I actually made, uh, in terms of what companies paid me, uh, here are the companies. So in January it was um, mostly uh, consistent of real estate income, so my Starwood Property Trust, uh, my Realty Income Corp, uh, my Stag Industrial, my Main Capital. These three are all monthly companies, so I get paid monthly by these guys. So the compounding uh, on these guys is very good. Uh, Cone, Cyrus One, which is also another real estate company specific to technology companies. I really like these guys. They have a really strong uh, dividend growth over the past couple of years. But uh, recently have sold off, obviously because a real real estate investment trust as a whole is sold off, but also I think a lot of people are uh, kind of cooling off on the uh, the IT real estate investment trust at the moment. But I think that the uh, funds from operations are going to continue to grow from this at a pretty expansive rate. And there's a lot of projects in the pipeline uh, for this company in particular, so I'm anticipating that the um, – the fund from operations and the dividend growth is going to continue to be pretty good. WP Carry is a triple net lease company. Um, I think everyone's pretty familiar with that. If not, then, then give it a check check out. And then Philip Morris and Altier Group um, really uh, brought it in uh, for a good $30, $40 or so um, in, in January. Uh, once again, my monthly dividend companies, um, Realty Income Corp, Stag Industrial, and then I got paid by my uh, telecom company, so over 100 or so dollars, coming strictly from AT&T and Verizon, and then Main Street Capital again, the business development company. Uh, I have Verizon in, in two portfolios, so I have it in my individual brokerage account, and then I also have it in my Roth. Uh, so together I get about you know close to 80 bucks uh, every quarter, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then the rest is kind of small, just positions here and there. Uh, and then the real fun part is when you get to March time frame. So Cedral Partners, which is kind of cool because at this point, um, I think Cedral Partners is about like $4 a share or something like that. And I immediately reinvest these dividends. So um, this is kind of like a, I guess, speculative company at this point uh, where basically I just reinvest all my dividends and hope that I continue to acquire a bunch of shares and that it essentially gets its way out of or close to bankruptcy. You don't really have as much cash flow uh, concerns as you do at the moment. And so I have about a 550 shares of this, so hopefully things continue to, to get better with time. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, always a long-term holding. I'll continue to add if it gets below the $50 range, which is really close. And then my monthly dividend company is my Realty Income Corp, my STAG, uh, and my Main Street Capital again. But then I also got paid by uh, my Shell uh, stock as well, uh, Hershey, uh, Phillips 66, which I'm up almost over 50%. Uh, 
at this point. I'm very happy about this purchase. Uh, and then my BHP um, semi-annual uh, dividend payment uh, coming through. And then I also have a little bit of uh, my Exxon stock, which I also believe I doubled. Uh, not doubled, but I think about $2,500 worth of additional Exxon stock in the first quarter. So I think in the upcoming months, let's check it. Um, yeah, I should go from about $20 to about uh, $53 or so dollars um, in June time frame. So more to come on that. But yeah, that's that's really all it was in the first quarter. Um, really looking pretty good in terms of uh, where I was. Um, next couple months, I would expect it to be somewhat similar. Maybe end up close to the thirteen hundred dollar range, depending on if I get any more invested capital uh, in the meantime. Especially if it's at a monthly dividend company and I invest. Um, I'm currently sitting on a decent amount of um, cash. Uh, if, Mostly from my bonus, uh, but also because I've been um, trying to stack up a little bit of uh, money just in case the market kind of takes a little bit of a dive. So uh, if that's the case, you know, it's around the five-figure mark. So if I wanted to add that, then it could add another 400 or, or so dollars in, in dividend income for the year um, for both maybe close to this year, maybe $300, but next year definitely – close to $350, $400, depending on the type of yields that I uh, invest at. But um, I think I'm just going to hold on to that. I'm contemplating whether or not I put that towards a rental property or, or something along those lines. I've been talking to some people at work to see if, if that's something that I want to do. Um, but then I also argue that I could just continue to invest it in real estate investment trusts or should I sell some of my real estate investment trusts in my individual brokerage account and buy a rental property and I go back and forth all the time so uh, but yes continue to add capital at a decent rate saving about half of my income and, and trying to invest that and grow uh, my dividends I'm really proud of where is it at here uh, this number here so I'm already up about 50 percent comparatively to where I was last year so over hundred and forty dollars of monthly income which I think is really cool um, so there's the graph here, which shows the dividend income by account, but I think this is a really cool account that uh, that I made my 2019. Let me fix this here. Um, volume is just under $470. I'll fix it later. But yeah, my 2019 is looking at just over $470. At the moment, I'm looking at about $430 for 2018. So maybe this will end up around the 475 or so range um, with this easily in 2019 exceeding the $500 mark but uh, I think it'll be very difficult to get around $6,000 this year uh, in terms of passive income but of course I'm going to give it a go I'd be very happy if it happens I don't think it will I think I'll probably end up in the um, probably the $5,700 or $5,600 uh, uh, for 2018 range so Anyway, very happy you guys stopped by the channel. Feel free to like, subscribe, and ask any questions down below. I view this place as a kind of a community where anybody can kind of ask questions. Of course, I'm by no means an expert, and I like to talk to you guys about anything that's on your mind, give my opinion as to like what I think. Uh, I generally won't tell you what type of stocks to invest in because I would feel bad if you lost any sort of money, but I'll kind of tell you what my kind of strategy is and, and where I'm thinking about going forward. and and really how I think about my investing strategy. So uh, feel free to always check out a bunch of my old videos, and I also um, have a bunch of comments that I try to answer as soon as possible every time I see them. So um, once again, longer than I expected in terms of video content, but really glad I uh, got back into making a video because it's been a while. So all right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, cheers, and uh, looking forward to your comments down below. Have a good night.